So guys, today is the first day of the Battlefield 5 Early Access Beta. The beta comes in two stages, there's this stage that I'm taking part in now, which is available to those who have pre-ordered Battlefield 5. It doesn't matter what edition you've pre-ordered, if you've pre-ordered any version of the game, you get access to this. Essentially, anyone who's pre-ordered any version of the game will get access to what you see playing in the background right now. It's the first two days of the Early Access Beta, and then in two days' time, the beta will become available for everyone, so everyone can download the beta and start trying out the new game. I was really interested just to jump into the game and just get some first impressions. I had no kind of ideas about what the game would be like. Obviously, I've seen some gameplay from early footage that's been released to us so far of people that have been invited out to events to play it. There was no real opinion that I had of what game it would be like by the time it came to us in the beta form. So I was really interested just to kind of sit down, download the beta, just jump in, get into some gameplay and just start finding out how the game works. I've written down a couple of first impressions that I'll go through now just to kind of introduce this video. What I didn't want to do was upload 20 minutes of raw footage of me playing in the game and not cut it whatsoever. I want it to be very raw, but I want to take out the stuff that kind of wastes your time. I want you to see what the game's like. I don't want you to see me sitting in death screens and selecting the classes and going through all of that stuff. The first video that we bring to the channel I think is best if you just see us playing the game, see how the game is played for a mid to advanced level player and just see what the game is like, what the mechanics are like, what the guns are like, and how everything works. So I'll talk you through these first impressions while the gameplay is going on in the background. The first thing that I noticed immediately was that the recoil on these guns is totally different to that of Battlefield 1, Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3. Doesn't you go, you go way back into the franchise, this game is very different. The guns are very organic, they recoil in different directions. There's... First shot accuracy for sure, there's definitely some way of being able to interpret what the gun will do. But you'll be in the middle of a gunfight, you'll be lasering someone, and then all of a sudden the, the gun will just jump. The sights will just jump left, right, down, up, almost as if your character is trying to fight the recoil, whilst you are also trying to fight the recoil through the controller. That's one of the things that really sprung out to me to begin with. The recoil can't necessarily be anticipated in this game. You kind of have to go with it, and I think a lot of people are going to be doing a lot more burst firing techniques and one-shot techniques. So if I was to compare the STG that I was using in this gameplay versus the Hell Regal in Battlefield 1, it's way less predictable. The Hell Regal in Battlefield 1, you could pretty much get used to the recoil. You could adjust a little bit with your controller whilst you were firing to control that. In this game, I can do that to an extent, but it's much harder and the gun just kind of leaps around in your hands, much like it would do in real life. Second thing that really struck me very quickly into the time that I've had with the game so far, which to be honest is only about two hours, but what really, really struck me is that ammo does definitely have a real effect. If you get into three or four lengthy gunfights, just with three or four people, you know, we're not talking about taking down a whole squad of enemies, we're talking three or four guys, if it takes you a little while to engage with them and actually get them, say if you're at a long distance, you run out of ammo before you've even reached the objective. You get to the objective, you're using your pistol, you're in trouble. That's one thing that really, really struck me. Obviously, we knew that there would be a lack of ammo in this game because we start with less and you'd have to kind of pick it up along the way, whether that be at ammo sites or off of dead players that you've killed. But it definitely makes a really big change to the way you play the game. The way you push forward onto the objective. You have to think and slow down a little bit. The time to kill seems a lot shorter as well. I mean, you'll see in the background some of the clips of me dying. It's like at the click of a finger, I literally just hit the deck. I literally just hit the canvas and that's it. All over and done with. Obviously, you get this really lengthy kind of death screen where you can call out to a medic and try and be revived. But... To be honest, I just basically skipped it every single time. I just wanted to get back into the gameplay as soon as possible. I think that's definitely something they can change if they can speed that up. I see no reason why you should have to hold down L2 and just wait for that timer to tick down. I think you should just be able to go back to the lobby straight away. Even if you wait longer to spawn, just give me the option to get back to the lobby straight away. And then I can crack on and do my thing and save somebody else's life trying to save me. Headshots seem to be a really key thing at the moment. I don't know if that's something to do with the weapon recoil being harder to handle. It certainly seems like I'm getting 
a fair few headshots if I'm aiming sort of chest high to begin with and then the gun sort of recoils back a little bit and picks up those headshots. Within two headshots, I'm downing someone. I think that really ties into the time to kill being, or at least feeling a little bit shorter than previous games. So I think that's definitely something to focus on, and headshots are very key and quite common at this moment in time. Now, healing is greatly reduced. I'm sure there's a lot of information out there for the specifics of how you can heal and the time to heal and stuff like that. But for me right now, just having played the game as a foot soldier, when I get injured... It seems the more I stay still, the more I don't heal. I got I have to get back on the move again to heal. So if I just stand there, like in previous games, you might put yourself into a corner just to try and build some health up again. That's not going to work for you in this game. You have to get back on your feet. Even if it's running in the opposite direction of who's coming towards you, you have to get back on your feet to start healing again. I think if you lose a lot of HP, you go down to sort of like 10, 15 HP, you can only heal back up to 50 before you need someone else in a medic class to help you the rest of the way. But if you go down to just above 50, I believe you can still heal back up to 100. I'm not sure on that, that's just how it felt to me in the game. But one thing is for sure that I'm going charging into gunfights thinking I still have 100 health, because that's the way it works in previous games, and then I realise I'm only on 25 HP. All of a sudden, someone shot me, I've literally been one shot, and I'm, I'm wondering why I've gone down. I'm, I'm, I'm raging. I'm thinking, what how, what gun is he using? How has he hit me that hard straight away? Is he a sniper? And it turns out that I'm just low health. I've just forgotten the fact that the mechanics of this game are so far removed from previous games. You can't heal like you used to. And you have that chance of being one shot, two shot, whilst you're moving again. And that kind of ties in with what I was saying earlier, with feeling more exposed as a foot soldier, because you just don't have the health, and you don't have that aggressive style that you used to have in previous games. I don't know if this is something that DICE has done deliberately with the clothing of friendly and enemy players, but I'm definitely finding players harder to see than in previous games. They don't stand out as much. I'm not sure if that has something to do with the map design, where there's a lot of shadows and places for people to hide. I'm, I'm not sure if that ties into it, but I'm definitely finding targets harder to acquire, especially charging through the map, trying to put a flank on, trying to put a push on into an objective. I'm struggling to cover every area of my screen and look for people and where they might be. It could just be personal opinion, but certainly for me, players are harder to acquire in this game. One of the other things that kind of leapt out to me when I was playing the game is the movement as well. Obviously, the movement mechanics have been completely overhauled for this game. In Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1, the difference is very slight. You can't really tell the movement. You know, some might be faster, some might be slower. I certainly feel faster in Battlefield 1 than I did in Battlefield 4. But in this game, it's a really weird mix of both. I kind of have the feeling that I can strafe left and right faster. I mean... You can see sometimes I have incoming fire and I dip to the left or right behind cover. I feel very manoeuvrable when I'm doing this, but then at the same time, when I'm climbing over things and when I'm charging into objectives, I feel slower. I feel like there's been more time taken over the movement in this game and to really assess how a human would vault over would jump through on and over things. I think there's been a lot of thought that's gone into what happens when a human jumps off of an eight feet wall, for example. You can see in the gameplay that your character kind of sinks into the floor where they're absorbing that impact. That hasn't happened on previous games, and that really throws you off because it pushes your gun sight down into the ground when you absorb the impact. Even when you're parachuting out of planes and stuff like that, you hit the ground and you really absorb through your legs. That's something to really take into account. As you're moving around, your character is a lot more fluid and you need to think in advance where your scope will be when you do that. As mentioned earlier, I really feel in this game, because of the mechanics, because of the slightly more advanced movement, the lower amount of HP that you have if you've been in a fight previously, I think you have to start slowing down the way that people play, especially if you've been a more aggressive style player where you've been charge into the objective, get to cover, then start taking out enemies. You can see in this game I'm kind of stopping just outside the objective, checking if the coast is clear, looking left, looking right, and then going into the objective from there, but not taking an obvious line. I'm not going in a straight line, I'm still trying to flank even if I'm only 50 feet away from the flag. I really feel in this game that people are going to have to start slowing their gameplay styles down, 
So far I think the game feels really good though, it's certainly a more immersive experience than previous games. I think the more I play the game the more I will obviously adapt to the playstyle that is needed for the certain scenarios in this game. So the more I play it the more I'll understand it and you guys will get a better perspective of what it's like for someone that's been practicing for a little while. One thing that really stood out to me though that I'm really impressed with are the sound effects and the graphics. Graphically, I don't think the game is far removed from Battlefield 1. I'm sure if you got up close and personal to some things then differences might start jumping out at you but right now when you're rushing through enemy fire there's nothing major that really stands out to me that differentiates the graphics from Battlefield 1 but it's still graphically an incredible looking game. It's a really lovely place to be and it does feel more immersive. I don't know if that's something to do with the graphics or whether that's something to do with the actual gameplay mechanics, but it does feel like I'm really immersed in the map. The other thing that I'm really impressed with as well is sound effects. Every sound effect in the game I like it has been recorded so well. If it's been manufactured, it's been done to the finest degree. If it's been recorded from real life audio of real guns, real grenades, real tanks, it's just been executed so fantastically well. A couple of things I picked out that really stood out to me were the sound of rounds falling to the ground. Now that's not a new addition, I know that games companies have been adding that into games for the past couple of years now, but the way it's done in this game is just so fantastic. What I've observed is that the sound changes depending on what surface you're on. There's a clip of me shooting over the top of some sandbags in this gameplay, and I hear the rounds falling to my feet but I'm stood on a wooden crate and it makes the sound around wood falling on top of a wooden crate. And then later in the game you see when I'm just firing out on the concrete, it makes the sound of a round falling to concrete. It's just absolutely brilliant. The sounds when playing the game as well in terms of gunfights are very intuitive. I can really tell when I've got a normal hit marker, when I've had a headshot, when I've got a kill. In my opinion, that's been advanced further than Battlefield 1. It's probably been the most intuitive sound system that I've played a game with in Battlefield 1. And it's even better now. I can really tell what's going on without actually having to see it. So guys, that's just my basic list of first impressions for playing the game. I've played about two hours so far. I'm going to jump back in now and get some gameplay with all of the classes and bring that to the channel as well. So please do subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date. Like I say, we do have access to the beta for the next two days, well, today and tomorrow. And then we have access to it when it goes live to everyone as well. So we will be bringing a lot of gameplay to the channel in the next couple of days. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, guys. Let us know down below in the comments section if there's anything you would like to see in particular that we can record for you. Stay up to date for more Battlefield 5 videos in the upcoming days and we will see you there.
Objective Dora has been lost. 